Okay, welcome to Stop the Violence Prayer Chain Foundation, The Naked Truth. And tonight we have some awesome co-hosts and a very special guest. Okay, we'll start by letting one of our co-hosts open up with prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you, God, for the naked truth. And that's what you are all about, the truth. So, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this program, that it will bless those that hear it, God, that their hearts and minds and souls will be blessed because of you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Welcome to the Naked Truth. My name is Vernon R. Warnermaker, Minister Vernon R. Warnermaker. My name is Minister Ernestine Albert. And our guest tonight is Minister Dia Ames. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So uh, thank you for having me, uh, especially for Black History Month. i uh, happy to introduce myself. Um, as you said, I am Dia Ames, uh, born and raised here in Delaware. Uh, I grew up in Sussex County, uh, went to Cape and Lopen High School, graduated from Delaware State University, uh, met the love of my life in Sussex County as well. Um, and then uh, we moved up here after college uh, you know, I worked at uh, Deloitte up in Philadelphia and then Bank of America. He worked for the Vanguard Group. And ultimately, we opened up two franchise restaurants, Zoot, uh, one in Wilmington on Kirkwood Highway and one in the Fashion Center uh, in Newark by the Mall. So thank you so much for having me and allowing me to kind of talk about my life's journey. Um, and so thanks again. If I may ask you, which one of you, your husband or yourself, thought of the name Zoop for your restaurant, and which one of you thought of having a franchise, more than one restaurant? Well, thank you. That's a great question. Um, I kind of call, call our journey into having a restaurant our midlife crisis, because it was right around the time that we turned, both turned 40. And you know, at that point, you're thinking about retiring. Oh no, not us, not us. So we, uh, uh, my husband always wanted to open up a restaurant. And he thought probably the best way to get into it was to open up a franchise where it's already established and you kind of buy rights into opening up a restaurant um, that's there. So the, the name Zoot was already established. It's actually out of Detroit, Michigan. And so he and his friend um, were out to lunch one day and went to a Zoot that was in Pennsylvania and he said, comes home to me and he says, I found the perfect restaurant for us to open. It's in line with who we are, our values, it's called Zoop. I said, okay, I've never heard of this because there's no Zoop in Delaware. Um, tell me about it. So he's like, they sell soup, salads, and sandwiches. So I kind of looked down at myself like, soup, salads, and sandwiches? Like, the only time we really eat soup is like, you know, when you're sick or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but uh, he, uh, he was like, no, this is perfect, this is perfect. So he took me to one in Pennsylvania, um, loved it from the very beginning, from the perspective of people are very friendly, very nice, and soup is very soothing. Um, and, you know, as you think about, you know, eating soup when you are sick, um, kind of our generation is one where, you know, you might go to your grandmother's house and she's got a pot of soup on the stove just made of whatever was in there and it was the best soup you ever had so it's you know it's one of those things that's nostalgic and it's comforting and that's what we found our restaurant to be um so we have a lot of people who come in when they need comfort when they need you know just someone to talk to just need you know a time out from the day so definitely my husband's idea um never in a million years could i have guessed that we would open a restaurant work in a restaurant anything of that sort, um, but now here we are, eight and a half years later, um, having two thriving restaurants, so we thank God for that, because only he can do it, only he can do it. Yes, yes, and that's wonderful, and I've been to both of your restaurants, and they are very soothing. Oh, thank you. And one thing I like about your restaurants, 
this is Black History Month, mm -hmm. thank God. But I tell you, when I went to the restaurant, I thought because it was owned by black, you know, couple, all I saw when I went in there were well-to-do, well-off white people, mm -hmm. for real. And I'm not saying that as a, a racist statement. I'm saying it as something good. It wasn't a place where a black family opened a restaurant and all you were going to see were, you know, just black customers. I sure. enjoy the restaurant and the food is excellent. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I yes. think one of the things we definitely try to do is make sure it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a di very diverse clientele. We have very diverse employees. And I think, you know, that's one of the main things. We want to make sure that anyone who walks in the door feels comfortable coming in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're all family. We kind of call it Zoop family. So it's one of those things where, you know, we love our customers. We love our employees. We love our community. Um, we're glad to be a part of it. The community has certainly embraced us. Um, you know, it's one of those things where we know that God gave us the vision. Um, there was a lot of work that came with that, but he also gave us great people who support us yeah. each and every day, whether it be, you know, mom coming in to get food for her kids, whether it be a teacher who's had a long day, whether it be your homeboy from around the way. We have so many great customers who come in and support us, and we would be nothing, first without God, but secondly, without the customers who come in and support us every single day, and especially during the pandemic when times were super, super tough. There were people who came in and they, they just bought food. And there was no way where they were eating all of that food, but they came in to support us. There were people who came in and say, our church family is praying for you. We want to make sure that we see you guys see it through the pandemic. And so, you know, we just thank God for his continued grace and mercy um, that he continues to give us as well as those who are around us. So, you know, all glory to God, all glory to God. Amen. So how, how did you feel when your husband present that to you and how did your church family uh, feel about you guys going to business? I know we used to fellowship together mm -hmm. so we talked about I know how we feel right. but I didn't know how your other side your family felt. Well it was one of those things where um, very very ha I think everyone's happy right? This is not something we've done before. Our family hasn't owned restaurants. We haven't done any of this before, honestly. And so it's one of those things that even in your mind, you say to yourself, can I do this? Like, I don't even know what to do, how to do it. Where do you get the money? Like, you know, how do we make this happen? A lot of prayers, a lot of support um, from both our, our blood family, if you want to call it that, our extended family, our church family, just people there supporting us. Word of mouth, uh, I mean, I can't, I can't say how much. It's like, if you go to our store on Kirkwood Highway, our name is not on the pylon. It's not on the sign that shows all the stores that are there. What you will find is you will find just the name. But when we ask people, how did you find us? They said, well, my aunt came here, and she said, this is a place we need to come to. My pastor came here. This is a place we need to come to. My friend came here. This is a place that you need to come to. And we found that it was really word of mouth and giving, quite honestly. I mean, we give samples when you come in the door. We supported a lot of the community and schools and things of that sort, and they certainly have supported us um, beyond measure. So... Um, you know how they say you can't beat God giving? Mm -hmm. If you once you start to give and you give and you give, not so that you can receive, but it, it, it just is an overflow. It's an absolute overflow, especially when you give from your heart and um, you do what God has intended for you to do. There will always be an overflow. Doesn't mean that it doesn't come with its hiccups and its bumps, because mm -hmm. it certainly does. But one yes. of the things that we absolutely know that no matter where we, are, where we are, whether we're on the mountaintop or whether we're in the valley, God is always with us. And as long as he's with us, <laughs> then what? Even if you were to lose what you have today, he's with me. It's all good. I already know. He's got a plan for me, right? Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. prosper. He already knows. Prosper doesn't always mean money. It doesn't mm -hmm. always mean a whole lot of True. time. It doesn't mean a whole lot of things. But 
and prosper in the way that he is intended prosper for that season. So um, I can go on and on and on about the goodness of God um, because I know had it not be for him, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I'm a plain and simple Jane from Slower Lower Delaware who came from a, a big yet loving family um, down in Sussex County. We didn't have a lot of money. I went to the service center. I have a whole lot of metal in my mouth that can tell you I went to the service center for the dentist. I went to the service center for um, the doctor. We are on food stamps. We went to the fire hall to get the free cheese and the powdered milk and all that stuff. So, you know, it's all about, it doesn't matter where you start. It's about the journey. It's about trusting God and where he's going to take you. Never in a million years could I imagine or fathom that my life would be like this. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 48 this year. I'm okay to say that. And I can I cannot wait to see what the rest of this life has for me. Doesn't mean it may be on the mountaintop, maybe in the valley. Who knows? But all I know is wherever God leads me, I am absolutely willing to go. A question. The other question is, <clears throat> as me and my wife went to your restaurant, and we've been to your house, and we fellowship together, uh, one, I like how you have the young people there and how the young people are very respectful. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I know you're teaching your family. Is something that you husband talk together to do that together? Absolutely. I mean, it's one of those things where um, we have a, kind of a three-pronged model of how we think, you know, a restaurant can be successful. You have good food. You have a clean restaurant, but even better customer service. Mm -hmm. And so um, what we try to teach um, as part of the restaurant, whether it's in our house or whether it's outside, is you have to be friendly. You have to be nice. And I think that has helped us. Um, because just saying, hello, welcome to Zoo, or a smile can actually disarm someone. So they may be having the worst day ever, but as soon as they're greeted with a smile or a hello, just to know that someone is thinking about them, it changes the whole tune. Now, I'll tell you, you know, sometimes you'll see on, you know, the internet these uh, restaurant interactions, right? And not to say that we haven't had any, but I can probably count three times where I've had a bad interaction in those eight years. And I think that it does come with, I expect my employees, as well as myself, to treat my customers very, very well. But on the other side of that, I also expect my customers to treat my employees very, very well. And when you have that mutual understanding in there, you don't have a problem. So, I mean, I think it's just one of those things where people come in, they enjoy how they feel when they're there. They enjoy spending their money there because they feel good. We make you feel good. We make you feel welcome. We want you to come in. Um, it's one of those things where, again, it's an extended family. Over this time, I found that you will learn about births and deaths and kids going to school and seeing kids who were in elementary school when they first come in and now seeing them in high school. We are extended family. We have people, unfortunately, this week we had a, one of our regulars come in and his wife came in yesterday and she said, I got to tell you, Joe passed away. And I'm like, what? And it feels like a gut punch because they are your family. They are an extended. And she wanted to come in to tell us that he passed away. And that's how you know that you're impactful. That's how you know that that smile is what does it. Yes, uh, one, I can attest the, uh, you feel very loved there when you walk in and welcome. And the, and the place and food is great. I usually tell my coworkers when I was working at mm -hmm. Christianity Care, mm -hmm. and I would tell them to stop that Zoop is a great place you will really enjoy. So I really want to thank you both because Jesus Christ and both of you guys, how you show the love towards everyone else and towards your workers, and they show it likewise. So you you can help not to be nice to other folks. When that you is there. true, very very true. And we thank God for you know 
I'll tell you, we've made some mistakes over this journey. We absolutely have made some mistakes, but you learn it. You learn, you learn it, you own it, you move on, and you don't try to make those mistakes again. And so it's one of those things that as we continue with this journey, we ask for God's grace and mercy. We hope we'll see you, um, hope you'll partake in this process um, so that, you know, you can prove family as well. Amen. And I am so glad to know that you are, what, 48? 40, 48 this believe. year. Yes, 48 this year. <laughs> I yeah, cannot uh, believe. We have, you know, mm -hmm. we got that. You know. yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that you're just like six years younger than me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Age is nothing but a number. You know what I mean? God gives us breath each and every day, new yes. mercies every day, and we have to take advantage of it. I mean, he gives us a... He shows us the plan. Doesn't mean that everything's gonna fall in our lap. We gotta do the work so that you know it can be fulfilled. Yeah. So you know, if nothing else, here's what I say: dream big dreams and go after them. Ask God for vision, for discernment, for grace, for mercy, yeah. so that you can get to that next place. I started from nothing, great nothings. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, because mm -hmm. I never felt like I was with I was without anything. Mm -hmm. But I started from nothing, and so there is nothing that you cannot accomplish. And that's, it feels like you know double negatives or whatever, mm -hmm. but you can accomplish all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. And Amen. on that note, we like to thank you so much, and we can accomplish anything through Christ thank you, Jesus. that strengthens us. Thank and you, I would Jesus. like to thank our co-host tonight, thank Minister you. Ernestine Albert, Welcome. Minister Vernon R. Wanamaker, <laughs> and our very, very special, special guest, my cousin, <laughs> my family, Aww. Cousin Dia Ames. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. having me. And God bless everybody. Amen. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.